let's put in an actual situation that might occur, shall we? Let's say we have a causal emotion. And the causal emotion that we need to address is that we have very little love of self and we have a huge amount of grief associated with that. So in other words, we have grief about uh, love of self. Uh, a lot of you can't see that, but I'm writing in there, love of self. We don't love ourselves, in other words. And the reason why we don't is because we were taught to love our parents instead of ourself. So whenever there was a situation where our parents needed love and, and we had to abdicate any love of self in order to love them, we did that. We automatically did that. We automatically chose to not love ourselves. Now, because we don't love ourselves and we're yet to grieve it, it creates an event. The event's purpose is to trigger the emotion right, that we don't love ourselves and the, the grief associated with not loving ourselves. Does that make sense? But instead, what we do is the event... So event causes us some pain that would demonstrate to us normally, under normal circumstances, if we were quite clear and we could just feel our stuff really easily, we'd realise the pain is about, I don't love myself and I can feel that I don't love myself and I just grieve, I just have a good cry about how much I don't love myself. Pain, I don't love myself. Uh, I'll just put painful, painful effect in there. Now, let's say whatever this painful effect is, um, it'll often be related to my body in some way. Because when we don't love ourselves, we have a tendency to injure our body or hurt our body in a lot of ways. So, so let's say, for example, it could be a matter of uh, uh, one that comes to mind is just a lack of love of self usually causes fairly severe teeth problems, for example, right? And so, and so we could have to go, the painful effect is we have to go to the dentist. How many of you like going to the dentist? You like going to the dentist? Wow. I'm impressed. <laughs> there was only a couple of people with hand up, I noticed. So. <laughs> so go to the dentist because we've now got a rotting tooth on one of the sides. And, and whatever side it's in relates to, you know, the grief of love of self related to the side. So it might be from a male, from a female, and it will affect the size of our teeth and so forth. And usually with the dentist, there's a lot of fear associated, isn't there, with the dentist? How many of you feel afraid of going to the dentist? Yep, yep. So fear is a major emotion. So can you see how the fear actually relates to a fear of feeling the emotion of, I don't love myself, af afraid to feel that? So let's just take that link out. So we go to the dentist. And what does he do? He does a big root canal on the tooth or whatever it is that's affected. It, uh, you know, we feel that the whole thing's solved now. Now, the whole thing isn't solved, is it? And it's a pretty small event, our teeth, isn't, aren't they, really? Like, you can, you know, live without one of them. Not always comfortably, but you can live without one. But unfortunately, because we've now dealt with the effect, and I'm not saying don't deal with the effect, by the way. I'm not saying don't go to the dentist. <laughs> don't, you know, I'm not saying don't go and get your tooth fixed. What I'm saying is don't assume it's all over. Because it ain't all over. That's what I'm saying. So, you go to the dentist, you get your painful effect fixed, and you feel it's all over for how long? He says, oh, I'll come back in six months, 12 months, or whatever. We'll have a regular checkup, so you do all of that. 
And you then think the situation is resolved and you go every 12 months and you might have a few patch-ups to do here and there and the teeth get a bit worse and you might have another one to come and so there's another one gone. And, you know, you might have a cap put on that one and then, then eventually a couple of them might be taken out. So you need a little bit of a plate made up and you put all that in and everything's fine again for a lot longer. And now there's a plate, of course. The chances of the plate going rotten are pretty remote. And so you might not have to visit the dentist for 10 years now. Like, or if you do, it's only for a checkup, everything's fine. But the cause is still present. The cause of the problem is still present. And by the way, because we've denied the painful effect and only dealt with the effect, the cause of the problem has layers now of fear associated with it. The reality is, the majority of you would prefer to go to a dentist than actually cry about the lack of love of self. Isn't that interesting? We put up, ask people to put up their hands. How many of you like going to the dentist? Two people put up their hand or say. So. None of us like going to the dentist very much at all. And yet, I'm saying to you, you would prefer to go to the dentist than you would to feel the grief of a lack of love of self. That's how strong we have the denial of that emotion. We'd prefer to have a very painful and often what we consider to be a traumatic event occur, then we would actually deal with the underlying emotion that caused it. It's pretty intense, isn't it, when you think about it? That's how strongly we want to deny it. So we finish up having a greater cause that creates bigger events now, where we have a bigger, bigger lack of love of ourselves, and we now have these layers of fear associated so there's just this fear associated now with this cause where we do not any longer believe that we're even capable of even feeling the emotion and releasing it anymore. That, that's the problem with the layers. The layers add to this belief that we are unable to actually release the emotion. And because we now believe with all of our heart that we're unable to deal with the emotion, large, which is not a truth, of course, but it's something that we actually believe, larger events get caused now that instead of involving our tooth, they start involving our life. And you know what? We would most of the time prefer that than still feeling the grief of a lack of love of self. We prefer to have a life-threatening accident than actually deal with the lack of love of self in most cases. Alan, you want to ask? Um, I'm just wondering if the layers of the, the cause continuing by the, the effect base uh, denial of the emotion, yep. is that like blockages in our fear when we're trying to get to the grief? Yes. What actually happens is every time we take an action to cure an effect, we are actually adding to a blocking belief around our cause. D does that make sense to you? Yeah, totally. We're adding to a blocking belief around our cause. We're actually adding to the layers now that it's going to take us to get into our cause. Yeah, and I'd imagine that that creates a bigger facade it does, yeah. certainly. It's related to the facade. Obviously, the more and more fear and blocks to the fear that are created, the more we come to live, become a, we become a person that we're not even really. At, at this stage, many of you don't know each other. And you know why the reason why that is? Because, because most of you don't know yourselves yet. <laughs> and you present a facade to each other. And when you present a fa facade to each other, how can somebody else know you? They can't. And so what we're, we're in this layers and layers of, of blocks now. All, and every time we respond to the effect, a pain, particularly a painful one, every time we respond to it, we're creating another layer of blockages in, around the cause as well at the same time. There's more resistance, in other words, yeah. to getting to the cause. And 